Safi Qureshi was locked up in a Dubai jail for allegedly bouncing checks related to multi-million dirham property deals in the Emirates. But following a hunger strike and a review of his case, Qureshi was released last year. The judge stating his checks should never have been cashed, as they were security for deals Qureshi had honoured. Well, it leaves a British-born businessman still fighting to clear his name in the civil court. But how did he come to be in such a situation? What lessons have been learned and what's next for the man who intends to keep doing business in Dubai? Well, here to tell all is Safi Qureshi, the CEO of Q Group. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Our pleasure. It's certainly been a story I think everybody uh, across Dubai has been covering for certainly uh, quite a long time. Take me through where you are today. You've had uh, two counts completely uh, dropped against you. There's third one you're waiting uh, for an answer for. And now Nikhil's launched, a cup, uh, launched another case against you, this time to do with the waterfront. Um, yeah, uh, been absolutely cleared on two, both in the criminal and in the civil courts uh, very recently. Uh, the third one is pending. Uh, we're still in the civil courts uh, and I'm you know, hoping for a judgment very quickly in that one as well so that we can clear that third one. Um, and I'd also, uh, quite rightly, Nikhil and I are in a bit of dispute at the moment over the waterfront uh, and that's still going through the courts. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, of your story, I, mean, I think it really did capture uh, headlines, captured people's attention both here and, and around the world. Why do you think that is? Is it just sort of a universal story? Was it the big numbers? Was it the timing? What do you think? Um, I, I don't really know. I think it could have been a combination of the fact that we uh, were high profile from the fact of owning the island of UK on the world development. Uh, I think I give a lot of credit to my family, especially my two daughters, Sarah and Maria, who really did bring the, uh, pl my plight you know, to the world's attention through their campaigning from justice for my dad. So I think sort of a combination of a few things sort of highlighted the situation that we were facing. If you had your time again, is there anything you'd do differently? Um, probably take a bit more care in uh, who I trust in, in business deals, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that it was, I mean, it was such a large deal when you're looking at the World Island, for example, there's a lot of money to be made. Was it too much of a risk? Um, it, it, I don't think it came down to uh, the factor of risk. I think uh, in my situation, it was more a, a quest question of people misusing uh, a law uh, or a loophole in the law that exists here in Dubai. And, uh, and, and trying to take advantage of that. Mm. I mean, I guess looking at, at that, uh, that, at that point exactly, when it comes to security checks, obviously with your experience now, uh, what is your take? How would you advise other people? I mean, do you think there's a gray area that needs clarifying? What do you think are the issues w with the I, laws it stands? I think there is a gray area in the, uh, in the check law. Uh, at the moment, you, uh, the law and the way it's actually implemented doesn't differentiate between someone who's genuinely trying to or committing check fraud and some, somebody who's fallen in debt or someone who's actually a victim um, of check fraud because we, we live in the UAE where post-dated checks and security checks are part and parcel uh, of the way business is done. So you could be issuing checks today which may be for this time next year based on a contract, based on the fact that someone has to deliver something against that contract. And what it doesn't differentiate or allows people to do is not honor those contracts and then still try and take money from you um, and obviously if you try and stop that effectively we become the uh, the criminals we, you know the, the law does not look into the fact that that person is not actually entitled or they're in breach that becomes a civil matter and the actual bouncing of the check becomes a criminal matter which you go to jail for so I think that there needs to be some sort of reform which differentiates from someone who's you know buying something and giving you a check deliberately knowing it's going to bounce and someone who uh, is a victim of someone else you know not delivering on contractual obligations more specifically i mean how would you like to see that reform uh, take place i mean is it is it i guess with specific legislation you know for as you said to differentiate the two cases uh are there alternative systems that could be used do you think they would work for the uae um i think the, i think the government and the authorities here are looking at reforming the check law and i think they are uh, you know, I, probably quite close to coming up with an alternative solution and, and I think that needs to be done anyway. But I think in the uh, immediate future, the criminal courts should take a bit more responsibility from the fact of finding out if the person who's making the claim uh, against uh, the, the person is, are they entitled uh, to this money? Uh, have they delivered contractually what they're supposed to deliver? 
I think if there was more emphasis on that in the criminal courts, uh, a lot of these cases would never come to court. I was interested uh, to hear you were telling us that you simply won't deal with post-dated checks anymore. How difficult has it been to do business uh, here in this country that obviously uses PDCs for an awful lot of things? How can you earn a it, living? It's, it's very difficult. I mean, it really is. I, you know, a simple example, I want to you know, take a car. And taking a car, if, if, you know, unless you have, if you haven't got the cash for it, means you want to take a loan. That means writing 50, 60 PDC checks and a security check, which is blank. Uh, so the alternative is to rent, and which is what I do now. Uh, it costs a bit more, but at least it guarantees sort of at least the freedom of you know falling foul of the law. It may not be my fault. Um, so I think it is difficult, and alternative solutions have to be found. But I think the business community has to lead that because at the moment when you go and do business with other companies, they take the easy route, and they take the easy route of saying, "Well, we want post-dated checks." For, for, I guess, new investors maybe coming you know, to the UAE to do business, based on your experience, uh, what, I guess, would be the biggest advice you would give to them? I think um, try and avoid, obviously, writing post-data checks and try and get tighter contracts in place. If you are going to be in a position of writing post-data checks, then you've got to really make sure that your checks, the numbers of those checks, and the conditions of how those checks can be banked should be very clear in a contract. And I think... These are some of the lessons that certainly I've learned. Absolutely, I hope we do see that happen. Just very quickly, we're almost out of time. What's next for you, particularly in regards to the world? Do you plan to, uh, to be part of that development? Do you think we'll see it up and running anytime soon? I, I hope so. <laughs> I, I, you know, I've always believed that that is a, a, an amazing project. You know, you've really got to get out there, see it and stand on those islands and you can see really the potential of it. But I think it, a lot of work needs to go in. Uh, from a developer's point of view, we need support from infrastructure. And until that infrastructure is there, we can't even ship materials and goods out there to build. So I think uh, it, it needs work on it, and I hope it happens. Uh, but you don't, you don't to plan build. to try and sell um, your No, part? not looking to sell at all. Mm -hmm. We still very much believe that the world is a really, really good destination. It's once-in-a-lifetime sort of development, and uh, we really hope we can move forward on it. Absolutely. We, of course, uh, hope to see you move forward on it as well. Mr. Krashi, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure.